These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Well, let's draw the mechanism in the product. I get this part because it looks like the recycling sign. Okay, that's easy right. to remember. But it, I don't know, it's kind of confusing when he starts adding like larger molecules and then having it do the TSL thing. Okay, yeah. All right, so let's try to clear that up. Yeah, so it's good that this is making sense to you. One thing that I find is really useful in these problems then is to write this down as your pattern to help you figure out the more complicated steps. So if you're given a great big molecule that's very complicated and hard to understand, try writing down this simple pattern and then using this as our basis. Let me give you some, some notation that might help here. I like to label these two carbons on the end of the diene with asterisks, and these two carbons on the end of the dienophile with dots, just so that we can keep track of them. Notice how in the Diels-Alder reaction, the starred carbons are forming bonds with the dotted carbons. So this is a good uh, technique to keep track of things, to put in these stars and these dots. Well, I just made that up. Um, I just made up the stars like and the dots. Notation. Yeah. But yeah. Um, of course, this is not a radical. This is just a, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is just something to keep track of what we're looking at. Well, let's do a kind of a harder case. Let's draw what the product would look like from this. Let's draw the mechanism of the product. That seems good. Where would we put the stars and the dots here? Well, the stars go here, not over here. The stars go at the ends of the double bonds. And here's our dots. One thing that probably would be helpful here is to number. Students don't use numbering nearly enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, these carbons over here are not participating in the reaction. They're just substituents um, that might confuse us, but they're not actually doing anything in this reaction. So we kind of have to ignore that and just focus on the atoms with the stars and the dots. All right, and um, as it looks like you guys noticed, if the diene already is a ring, you can't just draw a picture like we did up here. If the diene is a ring, we need a different type of picture. So here's our carbon, our starred carbons. And we know that the starred carbons are forming a bond with these dotted carbons. One is forming a bond with eight, and four is forming a bond with seven. And that's connected to the cyanide. But where am I going to put the five and the six? 
Well, the only place to find room, it looks like you were already drawing this correctly, is to push them up above the rest of the molecule. So you've probably seen some pictures that look like this. Four should be attached to the number five, and one should be attached to the number six, and five should be attached to the six. Sometimes it's called like a tent pole. So it's like we're, um, so when do you use this picture when the diene is a ring? When the diene is a ring, you have to use this type of new type of picture where the substituents on the starred carbon get folded up into a tent pole up above. And that's not the kind of thing I could have figured out on my own. We just need to memorize that this is a useful type of picture here. This is where I find the stars and the dots really useful. It's really helpful to me to see that these two carbons ended up over here, and these two carbons ended up over here. Otherwise, it's easy to start losing our bearings. Spatially, are the like, carbons 2 and 3 and 8 and 7 going downwards, like point an angle down? So like, are they at like 120 degrees? At a hundred and twenty degree angle from. Like is the is, it, is it like a? I'm not even gonna hex, but it like is it like that? So it's like two and three are down here, and then seven and eight are up here, and five and six are up here, like three B wise. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, that is what it's like. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Um, which means so. This picture here doesn't quite work because you've got this line to pointing out like this. So in your picture, three was over here, and that doesn't quite represent what the true no, picture no. looks like. It's better to draw this line pointing down into the left. That will help us to get the, the stereochemistry right. But you're right. Basically, um, if we look at this here, If we just looked at, say, atoms 3, 4, and 7, they're forming a kind of 120 degree angle. It's not really 120, it's more like 109.5, because this is about tetrahedral. But anyway, you're right, they're forming a kind of a tri triangular arrangement. That's correct. And uh, behind them, 2, 1, and 8 are also forming a kind of triangular arrangement. Now, do you remember what's usually favored? Endo or exo? Endo. Endo. Um, now, there's an easy way to make sure you're drawing endo when you have a tent pole. When you have a tent pole, the endo puts the dienophile substituents pointing down. two cyanides pointing down here. I think one of you might have drawn them pointing up, but that would actually be a mistake on this problem. And that is something that you'll be tested on, getting the right uh, stereochemistry. So if they tell you to draw the endo product, or if they tell you to draw the major product, which is the endo product, you'd want to draw it like this. If they said all possible products, then you could also draw the exo, which is when the cyanides are pointing up. They definitely both have to be pointing in the same direction. Since they started cis, they're going to they're stay cis. The diels auto reaction preserves stereochemistry like that. So they're either both up or both down. Well, in the exo, they would both be up. And in the endo, they're both down. Um, by the way, this little trick here only works for tent pole pictures. Um, if you're doing a, a situation like this where you're not drawing a tent pole, you can't assume that endo is down. That's a whole different thing. Uh, but we won't have time to talk about that. That's covered in the other video series. If you get a chance to talk about that, I talk a lot about how to tell who's the endo, who's the exo. Uh, but when you're drawing a tent pole picture, it's very straightforward. Um, endo is down in the tent pole picture, just as an mnemonic. Well, it's got D and O, which are the first two letters of the word down. Okay, so watch out for cyclic dienes, because we need a slightly more complicated picture than for non-cyclic dienes. I, again, it helps to put in the stars and the dots. Now, the next thing that we need to review is retro diels alder. I have a question. Yeah. Where do the double bonds go in our... In our yeah, isn't it between two and three? I made a big mistake. Good thing that you caught that. I make that mistake all the time. I should, really, I should have made that because I should, that there had to be a, a bond there. But yeah. So yeah, if I was taking these tests, I would lose lots of credit because I always forget to put in this new double bond. So by the way, um, after you do a diels alder, so um, how many double bonds are there in the starting materials for a diels alder? Three. Three that are reactive. 
anyway. There could be other double bonds that are not reacting, but three double bonds that are reacting, and how many of those double bonds, how many double bonds will be left at the end? One. There could be other double bonds that didn't participate in the reaction, but of the three that reacted, uh, well, all of them dis have disappeared, and they they've been replaced with one double bond in a different position. So we've gone from three double bonds to one. I tend to make the mistake of replacing three double bonds with zero. That's clearly a mistake. 